This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. One of the great things about Adobe Acrobat is its ability to work with your scanner to import documents directly into a PDF file. And if you're one of those people who spent hours scanning multiple files into TIFF or JPEG format, then saving them off on your hard drive, and then pasting them into a word processor to assemble them all into a single document, then you're going to love this feature. We can start working with the scanner by clicking the Create button, choosing PDF from Scanner, or by clicking the File button and then Create and then PDF from Scanner. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut to get to this menu item, so you have to click through several menu selections to get to the PDF from Scanner option. When we choose PDF from Scanner and if we're on a Windows machine, we see five presets available to us. And these have been pre-configured by Adobe, Auto Detect Color Mode, Black and White, and so forth. If you're on a Mac, you'll just click the Create PDF from Scanner and you'll be taken directly into the custom scan dialog box, which we'll cover later in this video. On Windows, we have the ability to use and modify these five presets, and it's worth our while to spend some time exploring this. As with most features in Acrobat, we have a configuration dialog box that covers how these presets work, and we can access that by clicking on Configure Presets. The first thing we see at the top of the Configure Presets box is our choice of scanner and here we can pick from any of the scanners that are available within our system. The next thing that we have is a choice of which of the five presets we're going to be modifying. There's no way to create any additional presets, but all five of these can be modified as you wish. We'll start by looking at the black and white document, and we'll make some modifications to this preset. For the input section in the center of the dialog box, we first see an option to scan both sides or just the front side. Now this option only has meaning if your scanner has a double-sided scanning capability. If not, this is simply ignored. But if your scanner does have this ability, make sure to take note and set this option as appropriate for your use. The next three options are visible only when you're using Acrobat within Microsoft Windows. Mac users won't see these three options even with a custom scan. The first is color mode. And here we have it set for black and white, which is appropriate for the document we're going to scan. Notice, though, that we have settings for grayscale, color, and auto detect as well. Again, this only applies for Windows, and in the case of auto detect, this setting only has meaning if your scanner has an auto detect capability. We'll set this to black and white for this black and white preset. Under resolution, we have the ability to set the scanner resolution in preset increments from 75 dpi all the way up to 3000 dpi, which is quite an extensive range. For document scanning, which is what we're doing in this video, 300 dpi is just fine. Under paper size, we can choose a default paper size, and when we scan with this preset, the scanner will automatically scan the entire fixed area that we've specified here. If we want to be able to change this from one scan to the next, may be better off with the custom scan feature, which we'll discuss in a few moments. Now, here's a time saver. Prompt for scanning more pages. When we're done scanning a single page, Acrobat will import the image into the PDF document. And with this option checked, Acrobat will pause to ask whether we want to scan additional pages. We can choose yes or no. And this is a great convenience to prevent you from having to go through all the menus and dialog boxes multiple times. You simply place the next sheet on your scanner, choose Yes, and you can keep scanning page after page until you're done. This is a very nice feature. In the document settings at the bottom of this dialog box, we start off by choosing to optimize the PDF after it's scanned. We can choose the quality setting here, varying between smaller size and higher quality in our document. We can see for black and white that we're set to a relatively lower quality, smaller file size, and that's appropriate for a black and white document. We do have options available to us again, and we can click on this button right here to open up the Optimize options. Here we have the ability to control the compression level, and we can choose lossless compression for better quality or lossy compression for smaller file size. And again, we see the same quality slider here, smaller size, higher quality. It's a trade-off. In this dialog box, under the Filters section, we have some features that are typically found within your scanner software, 
and are available right here within Acrobat. Starting with Deskew, this rotates the image if you've placed it a little off kilter on the scanner bed. Background removal will lighten or attempt to whiten any background area that's nearly white, but this only applies to color and grayscale scans. You might want to try the medium or high preset if you're scanning an off-white paper such as ivory. Descreen will attempt to remove or reduce halftone dots, which are the tiny round dots of ink that you see in images that have come from a printing press, for example in a newspaper or magazine. These dots can create patterns within your scan, and they can also negatively impact JPEG compression, resulting in a larger image file size. Setting this to on will apply this filter to black and white or color images scanned above 300 dpi. It's also worth noting that this filter isn't much use above 600 dpi in a scan. Text sharpening will do just as it says, sharpen text. The default setting of low should be okay for most documents, but if you've got a low quality original, you might want to try increasing this setting to medium or high. Again, these are all features that are similar to what's available in most scanner software, but they're built right here into Acrobat. We'll click on OK and exit out of this for now. Finally, and this is an important feature in the configure presets, we have make searchable, run OCR, and OCR is optical character recognition. The ability to convert an image to live text that can be searched within the PDF document. Now, there are some options associated with this as well. We can choose the scan language, in this case English, although there are many other options. And you can set the text output to searchable image or clear scan. Searchable image will recognize the text and it will place it on an invisible layer above the original image. ClearScan goes a step further and actually creates a custom font on the fly that resembles the original font. They both work well. ClearScan may give you a better visual image, but the searchable image setting is typically more useful if you need to edit or tweak the text afterwards. So I recommend sticking with searchable image as it seems to be a little more robust in allowing changes later. Finally, we have an option at the bottom to add metadata. And if we check this, we'll see an extra dialog box as we're creating the PDF that will allow us to add metadata to our document. We'll cover this in a future video, so we'll leave this off for now. So now that we've made our changes to the black and white preset, we want to click Save. Notice that if we go to another preset, for example, Auto Detect, the changes we made, for example, to prompt for scanning more pages, are not showing here. This is a completely different preset. A good safety net here as well is the Defaults button. If you ever get the preset adjusted beyond where you want it to go, you can click Default and set it back to the original setting. Once we've finished modifying the presets, we can close this dialog box and return to Acrobat. We'll choose Create PDF from Scanner. And remember, the black and white document is the one we modified, and we'll use that setting to scan in the text document from the platen of the scanner. As soon as we click this menu item, the scanning process will start, and we will not see the scanner's interface in this setting. Once the scan is finished, we get our dialog box asking whether we're finished scanning. We can choose that our scan is complete, or we can choose that we want to scan more pages. In this case, it'll keep track of the sheet number for us. Or we can choose that we want to scan the reverse sides, which is an interesting feature. If we're scanning multiple pages and want to scan the reverse sides, we go through the stack of all the front sides, then we scan the reverse sides. It will count backwards, 3, 2, 1, and it will interleave the pages into the document as it's scanning. We're done, so we'll click Scan as Complete and click OK. Recall that we enabled the option to run OCR, the optical character recognition, and make this text searchable. And we can see that we have text by using the selection tool. And when we hover over the text, we can see the cursor changes to an I-beam. And we can even select text one word at a time. This text is searchable. If we press the keyboard shortcut, Control F in Windows, or Command F on a Mac, we get the Find dialog box. And we can type the word cell within this dialog box and hit Enter. And it will find the first occurrence of that word. Clicking the arrow icons, we can move to subsequent occurrences of the word throughout the document. So as you can see, we've made this text searchable using the OCR, Optical Character Recognition feature. We can also see, if we zoom into this document, that the quality 
is not tremendous. And this was a decision we made in choosing the quality within the black and white preset. We can see that with the quality slider set fairly low as we had it, we have JPEG artifacts on the edges of our text. We can increase the quality and get a better scan, but this would be at the expense of a larger file size. And this is a trade-off you'll need to make as you scan your own images. Sometimes we may not want to use the built-in presets, and we may want the added convenience and flexibility of using our scanner's native interface. We'll choose Create PDF from Scanner, and in this case we'll choose Custom Scan. Custom Scan gives us a few more options than what we saw in the presets. We start with the scanner choice as we saw before, but in this case if we click on the Options button, we have an option available to hide or show the scanner's native interface. If we click on Show, this will launch the scanner software directly and it will return the results back to Acrobat. We'll click OK. And notice that when we choose that, we've disabled the options for color mode, resolution, and paper size because we're going to set those within the scanner's own interface. We can still prompt for scanning more pages, and I recommend leaving this checkbox on for convenience. Where do we want to put the scan? We can create a new PDF document, or we can append it to an existing document. You can see the existing open files in this drop-down list. In this case, we just have one. Or we can even browse to the hard drive and choose a file that's out on the hard drive to append the scan to. Another very useful feature. We're going to click New PDF Document. Notice this option for multiple files. If we enable this and choose more options, we get the ability to scan a certain number of pages per file and name the files sequentially with a prefix. For example, we could automatically create a new file every two pages or every three pages or even every one page. If you're scanning slides or photographs, this might be a useful option to create a whole series of documents. We'll cancel out of this and uncheck multiple files. The document settings are similar to what we saw when we covered the presets earlier, so we won't go into detail here, but we will make sure to enable Make Searchable Run OCR as we did before. The key concept here within this dialog box is here in the options where we enable the user interface to show the scanner's native interface. At this point, we're ready to click Scan. When we click Scan, we'll get the scanner's native interface, which might look different depending on your scanner. Within the scanner interface, we can see not only the quality and the image size, but we can change the page size on the fly. This is very useful if we have odd size original documents. We can even crop a document so we only scan a portion of the page. Also within the scanner's interface, we have access to the full range of advanced features that might be available within your scanner software. Again, these will vary from scanner to scanner. When we click Scan, it will run through, scan the image, and send it back to Acrobat. Here once again, we can choose the option that the scan is complete, and we have our custom scan document. Notice the page is cropped as we ask it to do within the scanner's interface, and we're not seeing the rest of the document below that line. Now you've seen how to create PDF files from your scanner using the built-in presets as well as custom scanning.